I'm gonna be interrupted. That's me letting you dance so that you don't cry. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what was proved yesterday. Everybody has been saying that the court trades cases on the internet. So let's do this. Let's go T-R-A-D-I-N-G-P-R-I-S-O-N-E-R-S L-I-K-E C-H-A-T-T L-E uh, E-L, excuse me. Did it again. Okay. Trading prisoners like chattel. Beep, 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 beep. And we hit enter. And let's see what we get. Some of you already know what this document says. Many of you have never heard of it because you just didn't know. But that's what I did. Without the quotes, well, how would you how would you do it without the quotes? It's an actual Ah <sighs> Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, there is an article out there that is entitled it may not like chattel, it may want to be put cattle. Okay. And let let it let let it let's let it correct it. It don't want to correct. Look at that. No correction. So we're gonna do the, I know, I know. I know I did the L E before, but we're gonna do it right here. This is where we're going to... Now, ladies and gentlemen, this information is available. You can get it anywhere. Trading prisoners like cattle. Okay? Chattel, cattle, same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this document explains the process of what the courts do. However, no one has ever provided you proof that they trade cases on the internet excuse me, on the market, okay? All crimes are commercial, we know that. CFR 27, CFR 7211. All crimes are commercial. We know that. We know that the states, cities, and courts create municipal bonds. We, we got that information, okay? But for each inmate, every single one of them, there is securities being created now let me let you guys know cca the corrections corporation of america most prisons are either owned by the corrections corporation of america or g e o g o ladies and gentlemen pay attention you see this pooling we mean the securities of the inmates this pooling that goes on happens as a result of this right here I want you guys to pay attention to some of the titles here. I've downloaded some of the documents, but there's one that's most important. You see, what you guys don't understand is SACOM, the Securities Acquisition Trust Commission. We create securities. That's what our organization does. When we create those securities, individuals invest. That's what the SAP packs are. They're securities. You're investing in a security. And we back those securities up with Pay attention, credits, credits that are federally recognized and also locally on a state level recognized. Go ahead, just look up tax credits for the federal government and for your state and see how they operate. Doesn't matter if you don't understand the process. That's not the issue. This is what we do. Well, guess what? They are doing the exact same thing. Can you prove that? Of course I can. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see this very first one? It's with sec.gov. Shall we go to sec.gov? Well, I already pulled it up, okay? But I want you to pay attention to this. The Court Registry Investment System, or CRIS, is an interest-bearing cash account. You will not receive your check back from your financial institution. This is for the people who were using the hour style money orders. Oh, yes, there has been a lot of changes to their Chris system as a result of the hour style money orders. Now the rules are you cannot 
pay unless you're ordered to pay, and the clerks are only authorized to receive certain forms of payment. But I want you guys to pay attention to Appendix K, Schedule of Fees for the United States District Court. Let's take a look at Appendix K. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the name of the corporation. Now, many of you may not understand what we're talking about. This is the official name of the corporation. This right here is not the name of the corporation. The clerk is the CEO of the fund, the court registry. Now remember, the district court is required to collect the following fees. Required by what? What law? There is no law requiring them to collect fees. Okay? There is no law requiring the court to collect fees. She just put me on hold, so that's what the music is in the background. Okay? I, I told her I didn't have anything else to say to her. I told her, let me speak to her supervisor. Why? Because her supervisor, I called in just to get some technical support on something for our company. And she wanted to go through the whole rumor ring of telephone number and all that. And I'm like, my telephone number is in front of you. I just pushed it into the phone. I'm not verifying it five or six times. It's in front of you. Here is the code. Here is the pass. Let's move on. Well, I need to check something. You need to check something. What you need to check? Well, sir, no, 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 no. You're going to put me on hold to check something. I want to know what you're going to be checking. Well, I, uh, well, while you figure out how to catch your breath, you're wasting my time. So let me go ahead and speak with your supervisor. Well, sir, I didn't ask you well, sir. I said let me speak to your supervisor. Literally, that's my conversation. That's how I handle them because they are trained to ask you the same question over and over and over again. I don't appreciate the same conversation over and over and over again. Okay? As a matter of fact, I hate repeating myself and having the same conversation over and 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 over, and over, and over again. So, I just don't go through it. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see Publisher's Notes. District Court Miscellaneous... Hold on. I didn't even hear what that said. Hmm. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, as you see right here, all of these fees, there is no law requiring it because, pay attention, your taxes pay for those services. Because they're government. You're not supposed to be paying to access your government. Now, I want you to understand, for handling registry funds deposited with or held by the court, the clerk shall assess a charge. Press 1 to be redirected back to the skill queue or continue holding to reach this agent. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I'm sorry, I had to hear what he was saying. To assess a charge from interest earnings in accordance with a detailed fee schedule issued by the Director of the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't misunderstand me, excluding registry funds from disputed ownership into pleader cases deposited under this code, there are several codes. Title 28 is the Judiciary Act. They normally hang up, and then I call back, but I what I'm doing is recording. That's why they're on speakerphone. I'm recording them so that when it comes time for me to get their attention, it's recorded. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. For following an action brought under Title Three of the Cuban Liberty and Democratic Solidarity Act, yeah, interesting name, huh? $6,800 is the fee. $6,800. And this is in addition to the fee prescribed by 1914. I told you they normally hang up. 
And that's exactly what they did. So I got to call them back. And so I got to put you guys on on hold. So I apologize. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me just explain a couple of things to you real quick. Got to keep an eye on the battery charger because... Nah, we're going to go ahead and change the battery right now. Uh, so there's going to be some little clicking and clacking and clicking and you know, that type of stuff going on in the background. Um, what happens is, what I am doing is I am plugging into the backup battery. And to be honest with you, no, lie to me. I love it when people lie. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be honest and let y'all know the situation is, and it is a situation, I just, this time of year, uh, my body regulating its temperature takes a lot of energy. And so my energy is just not there. And it's just the way it is. Uh, so I have to be patient with myself on the energy issue. Now, let's go ahead and explain to you what's been going on. I was on hold with them. We were having a conversation. One of the guys actually helped me correct a couple of problems that we were having. However, when I asked him about one particular issue that's been going on since April, he gave me the room of meringue. Well, we're working on it. This has been since April. <laughs> no technical support issue goes on since April. So we're going to be getting some free time. They're going to be compensating us from April or they're going to be looking at a lawsuit. Just that simple. It's it just that simple. Now, not adding anything to my plate. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to show you something. We've shown you this before. DC Code Section 22-3401. Thank you, Thomas Clark Nelson. Thomas Clark Nelson was the first to bring this to our attention. Now, the District of Columbia has created a corporation. The February 21st Act of 1871. That's when they incorporated the United States. It's called the Act of 1871. Okay, that's when they created... The District of Columbia. Well, the District of Columbia been here since... No, no, no. You ain't paying attention. We're talking about the actual corporation that exists today in Delaware and all of that stupid stuff. Now, pay attention. This is a law. No person engaged in the business of collecting and or aiding in the collection of any private debt or obligation or engaged in the furnishing of private police, investigation, or other private detective services. Pay attention. They're only concerned about collecting debts. Remember, we told you that they are a debt collector. Or police, like uh, the Department of Justice. They have all of the all of your police forces under the Department of Justice. Go back and look at that agency document with all the EINs. And notice how the Department of Justice has everybody under them. Shall use as part of the name of such business or employ in any communication correspondence notice advertisements did you say advertisements i said advertisements why you didn't say advertisement because advertisement makes no sense we can do advertisements okay cellular oh that's not cellular son that's circular cellular or other writings or publications they shall not use these words district of columbia district or the initials dc Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot use the word district in your name and or title. Wait a minute, you show? I'm show. So I wanted to find out. Oh, look at that. District 2 Capital Fund LP out of New York. A Delaware corporation out of New York. A Delaware corporation out of New York. Well, what's going on with this fund? Do you want to know what's going on with this fund? This is an actual company. <phone rings> Gotta go, y'all. That's somebody trying to call me. Give me a second. Odds of apologize. 
uh, getting back to this, ladies and gentlemen, no one gets used the term district in their title. No one. This particular company has the term district in its title. It's a Delaware corporation. Let's go ahead and show you. Like I told you, this is a private corporation. But opengovernment.ny. Okay? Now, how did I find this company? Well, I did an Egger search for the District of Columbia. Because District of Columbia was how they were listed in the SEC filing. Now, remember, they were listed in the SEC filing. So, in order for them to be listed in the SEC filing, I should be able to find something in the SEC. So, what I did, since I couldn't find it that way, I simply did this right here. See what I'm clicking on? Egger search. Egger! Egger, get on over here, boy! Okay, here's Egger. Now, watch. Remember, no other company gets to use the word district. So, I did all of these search. District of... Uh, United States District Court, United States District Court, Court Registry, Chris. Then I just did district by itself because I knew nobody could use the word district in their title. When I did that, watch this. Look at all these districts that come up. Trucker, District LLC. PH, District South. District 45, Dairy. District Supply. District 3. District 4, District 2, District 1. Really? want you to pay attention people all of these districts received the filing well at least some of them this one this one these two received the filing right about the same time that's why the numbers are similar see there are SEC filings all the time but when you go and you click on so I clicked on district did I, I think I did district 2 so I clicked on district 2 and it took me, hold on a second now, Ezzy. There you go. Don't just settle down now. Okay. Took me here, so I went to the initial public offering. Because this was 2018. Okay. Pay him attention, y'all. Pay him attention. This is District 2 Capital Fund LP. Michael Bigger. No, Michael Smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. Okay, managing member of the general partner. Managing member of the general partner. Excuse me? How do you be a managing member of the general partner? Hold on. I want y'all to understand something right here. Wait, aren't you a managing member and general partner? No, he's a managing member of the general partner. Uh-uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-uh. We're going to look that phrase up. Because I'm interested to see why they use that particular phrase. Because it's legalese, y'all. Legal malaise. Because it's legal malaise, they use words for a reason. No rhyme or reason. A managing partner, a partner manager, a managing general partner or a managing member in an LLC is a person who owns a percentage interest in the partnership or limited liability company while being responsible for actively running the business. We were talking about a managing member of a general partner. This is not a managing partner. It is a managing member, partner manager, not uh -uh, managing member. Managing member in an LLC. Well, this ain't an LLC. This is an LP. You follow me? What is a managing general partner? Didn't ask for that. Is a managing member an owner? Let's find out, shall we? Come on now. Managing member is both an LLC owner and someone who keeps the business running on a day-to-day -day basis. Ladies and gentlemen, a managing member is a managing member and owner. LLC managing member, now hold on, let's go back because we got to take y'all to where we got this from. He's a managing member of the general partner. You follow me? A bunch of words that mean nothing. Why? 
because they created these terms. The term itself doesn't make sense. How can you be a managing member of the general partner? Ah, because the general partner isn't an individual. Hold on now. The general partner is the fund itself. Are you sure it's the fund? I'm positive. No, I don't think you're positive. I think you eon, but you know, I just need to make sure. You show it's the fund. United States Security and Exchange Commission, Form D, Notice of Exempt Offering of Securities. Now, hold on. They are a limited liability corporate. No, they are a limited partnership, ladies and gentlemen. CLP, limited partnership. They are a capital fund. Remember, the court invests in mutual funds and other funds all day long. Hold on, y'all. One second. Okay. How do we prove this got something to do with the court? Well, we can't actually prove that this company has anything to do with the court. Well, then why are you showing this to us? I mean, it's like a, it's like an ordinary corporation. It's just, it's just a waste of time. We, we already know they got corporations that are registered in Delaware. You told us that this one's in Delaware. That's correct. However, anytime you see the word district, a company cannot have district registered in their name and they not be directly associated with government. We just showed you the DC code. Don't y'all remember? Oh. Sorry, no, nah, I've already turned down the DC code, so apologize. So, ladies and gentlemen, any company with the word district means that they are, pay attention, part of the government. This district, pay attention, is a Delaware corporation registered with the Secretary of State for the state of New York. They are a fund. Why? Because of pooling and servicing. Now, you see, just the name. Go to this street, be a bunch of people sitting in the office, doing work, punching numbers, pretending. Hold on. Investment manager, District 2, GP, LLC. Wait a minute, another government company? Hold on. General partner, didn't I tell you, to, and I didn't look at this before. Didn't I tell you the general partner was a, another corporation? District 2, Holdings, LLC. Hold on now, wait, we, we ain't stopped yet, okay? Now notice it's a pool investment fund, a hedge fund. The courts are hedging their bets. Or the government is hedging its bet. Sorry. Registered as an investment company under the Investment Company Act of 1940? Nope. Oops. Ladies and gentlemen, they declined to say how much their fund and company is worth. Could y'all hold on? This that company I've been dealing with all morning. Y'all all have to excuse me. Good morning. Okay, I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. As we're going through this, they have declined to say how much their portfolio is valued at. Look at this. Doesn't say anything. They declined to disclose. They close. They don't want it. They. Okay. Then they listed up there that they're not a part of the Investment Company Act. But here they document that they're a part of the Investment Company Act. Type of falling, new notice, first sale. <laughs> and you know what? Oh, I can't even click on it. It's not a link. You would think it was a link the way it's highlighted. Then it says duration of offer. Equity, they're dealing equities. Aren't they courts of equity? Pool investment fund interest. Now, I'm only suggesting that this might be a court. Now, hold on now. Hold on, they're a Delaware corporation. You know, all the courts are out of Delaware. All the major corporations are out of Delaware. But they heightens their identity. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, again, I'm not saying that this is the court. What I am saying 
is that only the government gets to use the term district. No one else gets to use the term district in their corporation. Go ahead. Call up the IRS and tell them you're setting up a trust called the District of Aaron Bus. Go ahead. And see if they allow it. And then ask them, wait, why can't I use that word? That's just a word. Okay, because it's a special word. A special word? Yes, it's so special that MC Hammer can't even touch it. MC Hammer? Who that? You ain't never heard of MC Hammer? I ain't never heard of no MC. What the type of stupid name is that? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It was a stupid name. Okay, anyway. The amount sold. Nine million one hundred and fifty thousand. The amount sold. Nine million one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now you notice it says or indefinite. No, they type this number in here. There you go. And let's get on what I get known. And that's it. That's the document, ladies and gentlemen. This is just one filing. I only did one company so that I could show you something. Let me show you something. Oh, it's up on my dating. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I want to show y'all something. Tick tock. Uh oh. Do you see where it says the United States District Court, District of New Jersey? It doesn't say for the District of New Jersey. Office of the Clerk. Do you see how this is their Schedule K registered with the SEC? Then if the United States District Court for the District of New Jersey is registered with the SEC, somebody's got to be calling the SEC saying, wait, hold on a minute. I got the Schedule K for the Schedule of Fees with the District Court registered in the SEC. How come I can't find this in the Edgar? How come I cannot find this when I do a search? What must I do to find this document and other documents associated with it? You don't have to tell them because this proves that the district court is involved in securities. That the district court being involved in securities with the executive branch of government is involved in commerce on a continual basis, which means that they have abandoned any claim to sovereign capacity and are to be treated as any other ordinary corporation. You can tell them that. They gonna understand. I promise you they gonna understand. You see what I just did? I put clerk of the court. Let's do that. Anybody can be called a clerk. Anybody can be called a court. Oh, snappity wappity. Ooh, wait, they said you ain't finding nothing on no clerk or nobody's court. Wait a minute, hold on, y'all. That don't make no sense. We know, we know that they got it. So let's do court, okay? And I'm gonna do court. C-O-U-R-T. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. Whew, let's get rid of that and do that. Okay, let's go back. C O U R T. Yeah, I didn't do it the last time. Uh oh. See, I told you, everybody can have a court. That's not a big deal. Everybody and their grandmama can have a court. But you can't have a district. Go ahead. Like I said, go ahead and think you're going to establish something called a district. Now, what I was explaining to you guys, and it is necessary. Now, I put this in here because I want to see if we can find any cases. Now, we're going to go here. And that's why I went to the SEC because I was looking at these cases earlier. So, that's why when I went and did the search and I saw SEC, I jumped on it. Okay. The registry of the court is synonymous with the court registry system. 
an interest bearing depository. This is a case that you want to use. Shows that they are making a profit. Government cannot engage in commercial business activities. To make a profit is a commercial business. That's what companies are in business for is to make a profit. It is contrary to standard court practice to maintain a court registry that is separate and distinct from Chris. The court cannot have two registries is what it's saying. It is contrary to standard court practice to maintain a court registry that is separate and distinct from Chris. See, District of Columbia District Court Rule Number Six Seven. Well, let, let wait. Hold on. Let's go find that rule, y'all. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Rule Number Six Seven. And let's do this. Let's see what them sun growers are doing in California. Rules of the District of, Cal uh, of, 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 of the Columbia. Deposit in court and disbursement of court funds. This is New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, every court has the same rule. Every court created the local rules, but they've updated it, especially since people were following our style money orders into the court registry. So they created these local rules to prevent people from doing that. So we're going to go here and then we're going to talk, okay? And then I'm going to cut this video short because I got work to do. You got work to do. I got work to do. You got work to do. I got work to do. You got work to do. I, I got it up. I got work to do. I'm sorry. I apologize. Sometimes I get this feeling. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the local rules. This is the United States District Court, 333 Constitution Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C. Angela D. Caesar. I wonder if Angela D is the clerk of the court huh what up Angela we're gonna be talking to you in a minute all right yeah see clerk of the court there she is all right ladies and gentlemen she heard she holds the purse strings have you noticed that for the federal district courts you've never seen the clerk of the court go ahead well I've talked to the clerk of the court yes you certainly have at least one or two of you but have you noticed you've never seen it? All right. That's your proof that they have rules regarding the court's engagement. And this is Delaware Life Insurance, another Delaware corporation. It is further ordered that these monies shall be deposited with the clerk of the court into the registry of this court. And then as soon as the business of the clerk's office allows, the business of the clerk's office, the clerk's office does business, y'all. The clerk of the court shall deposit these funds into an interest-bearing dispute ownership fund. An interest-bearing dispute ownership fund within the court's registry investment system. When we looked at that case yesterday, that's what that case said. Interest-bearing dispute registry fund. Okay, dispute ownership fund. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on one second. Got to show y'all something. And they got standing orders. So we want to go here. And the reason why we want to go here is because this is the thing that lets all of you know that all of the courts, doesn't matter which court, investment of court registry funds, investment of court registry funds, 28 USC 2045. I want to do 2041. Now, what's going to happen is I'm pretty much thinking 2041 through 2048 is going to be talking about the same thing. Okay? So, we're going to go to Cornell. Hey, car. Corn. That is corn, y'all. Corn. Oh, he ain't no Ohio. He ain't no Ohio native. 
deposit of monies and pending or adjudicated cases. Pending or adjudicated. In other words, cases that are complete. What does that got to do with anything? Well, ladies and gentlemen, when we trade inmates like chattel, by pooling, we mean securities on the inmates. These are adjudicated, inmates are adjudicated cases. Sorry, got to bring it all together. Got to tell y'all where we're coming from, where we're going. Because if you don't know where we're going, you'll never know where you've been. This section shall not prevent the delivery of such monies to the rightful owners upon security. According to the agreement of parties under the direction of the court. All monies paid into any court of the United States or received by the officers thereof. All monies. This is worded this way purposely. It doesn't say all monies in association with blah, 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 or dealing with blah, blah, blah. It says all monies paid into any court. That includes, hold on now, y'all don't get me. I wish y'all would understand where I'm coming from. I wish y'all would understand where I'm coming from. Let me see if I can show y'all where I'm coming from. Uh, no, not there. I think it's here. No, it ain't here either. Where did I put it? It ain't here neither. I don't know what I did with it, y'all. I must have put it down here. Let me see. Oh, there it is. Schedule of fees paid into the court. Paid into the court. Schedule of fees paid into the court. The court is required to collect the following fee. Why? So they can make a profit. Now, <clears throat> In a moment, we're going to talk as to why the courts are paying these fees and making a profit. It makes a lot of sense when you understand, not overstand, understand what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, we went to 81. Let's see what 82 says. I'm, let's get curious. Let's get curious. Now let's get curious and fall in love. Okay, so let's get curious, y'all. Withdrawal. No money deposited under Section 41 shall be withdrawn except by order of the court. You cannot withdraw your money from that court unless the court issues an order. Hoo-wee! And has been adjudicated or is not in dispute and such monies has remained so deposited for at least five years unclaimed by the person entitled to it, such court shall cause such money to be deposited with the treasury in the name and to the credit of the United States. To the name and to the credit of the United States, any claimant entitled to such monies may, on petition to the court or upon notice to the United States Attorney, and full proof of the right thereto, obtain an order directing payment to him. Pay attention. What notice to the United States Attorney? Okay. Now, hold on. I'm going to suggest that some of y'all go over 28, 2001 through 2008. I mean, 28, 2041 to 2048. Sorry. Whew. Except for public monies deposited under this title. Each clerk of the United States court shall deposit public monies that the clerk collects into a checking account in the treasury, uh, subject to disbursement by the court clerk. At the end of each accounting period, what's an accounting period? Well, they use the accrual method, okay? 40, uh, three months. I mean, no, 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 33 months. What am I saying three months for? 90 days, y'all. It's a quarter. Okay. The earned part of the public monies occurring in the United States shall be deposited in the treasury to the credit of the uh, appropriate receipt account. The appropriate receipt account. The appropriate receipt account. See, they have a name. This name describes what? What's the appropriate receipt account? Do you follow me? This is Congress who did this, ladies and gentlemen. They knew what they were doing. You talk about a scam. Again, in a moment, I'm going to show you this one, and then we're going to stop because we've already seen 45. A motion to the United States Attorney.
the court may order any money belonging to or deposited by or on behalf of a defendant with the court for the purpose of a criminal appearance for the purpose of a criminal appearance bail bond trial or appeal so we do know that this deals with the individual bonds so the people who were doing the bonds and following the bonds into their case ladies and gentlemen you need to start creating surety bonds based on your tax credits ladies and gentlemen you need to start creating surety bonds based on your tax credits sorry I apologize to be held and paid over to the United States Attorney to be applied to the payment for any assessment fine restitution penalty imposed under upon the defendant the court shall not release any monies deposited for bond purposes after a plea or a verdict of the defendant's guilt has been entered and before sentencing except upon a showing that the assessment fine or restitution or penalty cannot be imposed for the offense of the defendant committed or that the defendant would suffer undue hardship this section shall not apply to any third party surety any third party surety any third party surety that means you you are a third party surety you're not the defendant you're standing in a surety that makes you a third party surety don't take my word for it go back and do your research all right ladies and gentlemen let me explain something to you what what we need to explain is this right here okay trading inmates like cattle because it is a trade oh by the way they show you how to look up your case number on fidelity now this has changed this has changed but they show you how to do a search for your case number on fidelity here so uh, this site is called war is crime .com forward slash new new forward slash how hyphen Illuminati hyphen R hyphen trading hyphen prisoners hyphen like hyphen cattle forward slash that's how you get to this site now they sell the prisoners accounts as a commercial dishonor and they sell it to the public as a commercial dishonor a debt ladies and gentlemen you remember the Treasury sells debt remember they deposit it into the Treasury and then after they deposit it they buy Treasury bonds the Treasury sells debt you don't believe me let's do it again cuz some of y'all don't believe me the U S T R E A S U R Y S E L L S D E B T question mark and let's see what we get the Treasury sells debt so when you buy a T bill a Treasury bill that's what a T bill it is not a T bone it's a T bill the US sells debt at a 0% yield for first time for the first time since early pandemic the US sells debt the US sells debt the US sells debt the Treasury sells debt so when these individuals are saying they sell the prisoners account as a commercial dishonor a debt and they sell it to the public as a commercial dishonor a debt a security a Treasury security is a bond don't believe me watch this when you go into court they always say that they are operating under statutory jurisdiction Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, says a statute is a bond or an obligation of record. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh-uh. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Y'all know how I do things. We gonna look this stuff up. Because guess what? Black's Law is the legal dictionary. Wait, 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 wait. A general obligation, a GO bond, is backed by the credit and taxing power of the issuing jurisdiction rather than the revenue for a given project. Huh? Really? Hold on. 
Book entry system of recording the ownership of a bond or obligation in the books, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that definition. So, ladies and gentlemen, Google know exactly what I'm doing. Google know exactly what I'm doing, and they doing this on purpose, stupid mother. I mean, Google, um, let's see if we can make sure Google understands what I'm trying to say. Federal case number update. Freedom school! Okay, we're not at freedom school here. But this is what Freedom School, they publish the same information. I'm looking for the Black's Law Dictionary quote. I'm not looking for this quote because this is coming from Google Books and those sites are copying and pasting. Educate yourself. How prisoners fund America. Okay, they're quoting the same thing. Prison issue. Covering the same thing. Wait, dot US. Oh, dot us. Okay. Whew. That's one of those sites. Uh, Gene Keating Bonds. Hey, Gene Keating Bonds. Gene, you have bonds? Hey, y'all. Gene Keating, the legend. Sorry, got to give Gene his credit. Sorry, I've been... What you guys are not aware of is that I've been hearing of Gene Keating since the early 90s. That's why I has respect for the young man. Okay? Gene Keaton. And I don't think this is Gene Keaton selling his stuff. I think this is somebody else selling Gene Keaton's stuff. Okay? Uh-uh. I don't need you to send me no notifications. You want to find out if I'm a bot? I'm all about it. I'm about it, about it. Master P, mother... I'm sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, won't be getting this document from these people because this is one of those sites. And I don't trust those sites. So anyway, let's get back to this. I want the Black's Law Dictionary. Watch this. No, I got, I got a, a better thing. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. And we're going to go dictionary. A written law passed by a legislative body. Okay. Now, do you see that? Now, the Bible does use the word statute, decrees, ordinances, regulations. The Bible uses that throughout the book of Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers. Okay. However, statute versus law. Look, somebody actually looked it up. Okay. W H A T is No. Watch this. Hold on. You see that right there? There you go. Is a statute a bond? That's what I'm looking for. Statutory and conventional bonds. What's the difference? For a statutory bond, one must look to the applicable statute itself to determine the condition of the bond. Whatever is written on the bond, but not required. Okay, thank you very much. I didn't ask for a statutory bond. I just said it's a statute of bond. Uh, give me a second. Hey, common law bonds. And look at where this is at. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, y'all better believe I got to do some research on common law bonds. I, I know some of y'all going to be wanting to do the research, too, since I done said something. So do your research now. Uh, surety bonds, ladies and gentlemen. Fiscal treasury surety bonds. Law and regulations. Surety bonds. You know what? I do think that eventually I'm going to get into that. All right, it's time to bring this video to a close. Sorry, not going to finish that. We're going to finish you. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why it is illegal for the courts to trade these cases on the market, pay attention, because they're interest-bearing accounts. They're deposited into interest-bearing accounts. The longer the bond is at issue 
the more money they make. So the more the person's in jail, the more money they make. Which means they have an incentive to keep putting us Negroes and black people and color, I mean, you know, in jail. Well, black people aren't the only people they put in jail. You better go take another look because that's the majority of the people they put in jail. Because slavery hasn't gone anywhere. And if you're not a house Negro, then you're going to jail. Well, look, I ain't no house Negro, mother. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, young lady. Who the f you calling a young lady? Oh, you know exactly what I was saying. You don't get to correct me. If you ain't in jail, you're a house Negro. Sorry, the people who are in jail are the ones who are funding this country. Go back and read trading inmates like cattle. Why do you think they went to Afghanistan? when they did not have birth certificates in Afghanistan. Go back. Check it out. They have birth certificates now. Why? Because that's how they bond these cases. Think about it. If they're bonding them in the court system, they're bonding them with the county recorders. They're bounding them with the vital statistics office they're bounding them with social security numbers ladies and gentlemen it is supposition if they're doing it over there they're doing it over there like i told you my mama had me thinking this way if you do it at home you do it at school so don't dare come in here lying to me saying you ain't did it i already know you did it by the fact that they told me you did it because i know you my mama didn't sound like no man, but those are her words. She didn't say that just once, people. She said that several times throughout my life. I don't remember much of my childhood, but those sayings keep coming back, and they be like over my shoulder, loud as day. So let me explain to you what she was saying. My mother was saying we are creatures of habit. What we practice at home, we're going to practice in the street. So when we left that house, if we went out there and did anything, and they came back and told us if it was something similar to what we did at home, we got to beat, okay? It ain't no messing around. And when I say we got to beat, I mean we got to beat. Because we grew up in one of them homes where there was no sparing nobody's rod. Because I ain't never been nobody's spoiled brat. Okay, so now that you understand that if they are trading it in the court and they made that legal, then they also made it legal for the county. I can't tell you where that information is because I didn't look up that information. But remember, wait, hold on real quick. We're not going to travel off board. We're going to come right back to all of this. I just got to remember which one. Dagnabbit, you ain't supposed to be separate. Get your butt back where you belong. Hold on. He, he ain't supposed to be over there. Okay, let me put that back up. He, he ain't supposed to be over here. He's supposed to be... Where you going? We're going to put you at the end. Since you want to just be jumping all over the place. Jump around! Jump around! Okay. See, Courtland, that's because I looked at the word court and it popped up. Hey, that ain't nothing. Nobody wants nobody's court. We know that that ain't the type of court I was looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, we got one more thing we're going to do because we just told y'all about it. As a matter of fact, let's do it this way. It's easier. We got the treasury sells debt. We know the treasury sells debt. Now, C-O-U-N-T-Y-R-E-C-O-R-D-E-R P U R per chase C H A S E. Why somebody gotta pursue something? Per chase. I don't know why nobody's per chasing. Okay. Uh, million I C I P A L B O N D S. Municipal bonds. Where's that I coming from? 
I before E except get out of here, mother. Now, the county recorder purchased municipal bonds. Now, why did I put that in there? To show you this, that municipal securities are purchased by the county, ladies and gentlemen. States, cities, and counties. States, cities, and counties. States, cities, and counties. Reasons most investors buy municipal bonds. Because they issue these bonds. Hold on now. Y'all need to really pay attention right now. What do you think they're using to back these bonds up with? States, cities, and counties. What are you thinking that they're utilizing to back their bonds up with? We're creating bonds. The courts are creating bonds. They are backing them up with something. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to back our bonds up with something. That's why I had to legitimately create debt. Bonds are evidence of debt. Don't take my word for it. Do your research. Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta go. Uh, one more again. We're gonna be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, that call took about 35 minutes. A couple of questions the person was asking. Look, municipal bonds. Now, many of you may not get why I'm showing you this. Each one of your cities, each one of your counties, each one of your districts, invest in bonds, whether it be the schools, whether it be the courts, whether it be the fire department or the police department, they invest in municipal bonds. Most of these municipal bonds, when they buy, pay attention everyone, because this is impotent. Most of the bonds that they buy, when especially like the courts, when they buy treasury bonds, remember the treasury bonds are backed by what? The money's invested by the courts through the Chris system, which are inmate accounts and other people's accounts through the court. The people who are in jail is paying a debt to society and the treasury is selling debt. Okay. Are you guys understanding what's going on here? The treasury is selling debt. Each one of these bonds, these municipal bonds, are based on a debt. This is the case in California. I didn't know until I read it a little bit a moment ago that the misrepresentation and emissions and blah, blah, blah. Orange County, Orange County got in a lot of trouble for this. Orange, look, 1993, 1994, I remember this. Oh, I'm sorry, most prejudiced county that I've experienced in Los Angeles, I mean, in California. I heard that Alameda County is, you know, it's up there. But Orange County takes the cake. Okay, anyway, some people are not going to like that I say that because they're lovers of Orange County. I don't love Orange County. I don't love Los Angeles County. I don't love any of the 58 counties in California. That's right, 58 counties. Most of you, your states only have two counties, three counties, four counties, maybe 10. But 58? Texas don't even have 58 counties. I'm sorry, I apologize. Whew, Lordy. Ladies and gentlemen, the county pools and the financial conditions of Orange County, including the ability to repay securities. Oh, you thought this was pools in the back of people's yards. The official statement of these municipal securities offerings contained material misstatements and omissions concerning the risks related to, among other things, the county pools and financial conditions, pooling and servicing. Okay, county, Orange County investment pools, pooling and servicing. Is what this is talking about. Every county does that. Your county recorder does that. Now, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Y'all don't think that's true? Well, let's talk about the... How do we prove that that other office of vital statistics, that they do the same thing? How do we prove? How do we prove? How do we prove it, ladies and gentlemen? Watch this. We put the county recorder purchase of municipal bonds, and that's what it gave us. 
Now I want y'all to I want y'all to follow me. Okay? Come with me. We don't want to do municipal bonds. Uh-uh. We're going to just do bonds. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Okay. Buy California tax free bonds. Always fresh. California bonds. The free bond broker since 1978. That's right, the state of California, the state of Virginia, the state of New Hampshire all buys bonds. See, the state treasurer office. That's where it happens, just like the United States treasurer. The state treasurer wants to have the same right. There are many types of municipal bonds, but they have California general obligation bonds. Sales generally take place three to four times a year. You've heard of the general fund, right? Well, that's the taxes they collect from the general people. <laughs> now, again, every state sells bonds. These bonds are associated with court cases. All you got to do is show them the Chris Law. 28 USC 2041. And say, hey, you federal court, what the are you doing? Okay. Again, minimize this so we can talk. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to take all day because this never finishes. It's something wrong with the program when it's updating this way. Wusa, our company makes bonds. Had we not done this and did the research, I would not be able to explain what I've been explaining the last few days to you that the courts through their Chris system are engaged in commercial activity that they take the funds and then use the funds that they're supposed to be holding for the people having no right to use that money for any other purpose because the case has not been adjudicated and even if it were they shouldn't be paying into the court system because who gave the courts the right to handle anybody's monies so they create these bonds they take these cases they file it with the well the clerk of the court is the one who's overseeing these cases that's why the clerk of the court is so valuable they hold the purse strings and because the state's attorney is the one who authorizes this and approves it and so on and so forth according to the statute and they deposit it with the treasury at the treasury window they don't have to go down any place it's just a keystroke you just a key and they stroke the key and there it is it appears and it's guess what once they deposit it with the treasury then they take that deposit and they use for purchase treasury bonds debt excuse me ladies and gentlemen what gave the courts the right to purchase debt why would you take my monies and purchase debt when did I give you permission well when you deposited into the court I didn't give you permission to do that you told me I had to deposit it you made a threat and said that if I did not pay this I was going to jail so now you extorted me, and then you said I did it intentionally, that I did it willingly? That's involuntary thermomitude. You mother, did you keep doing me wrong? I'm a man. So now that you understand how the system operates, trading inmates like cattle, going over this and now having the proof from the very court's own record that they are trading these cases on the market because the law says they have to don't believe me go back and look at the cases I've shown you where the courts have said that the clerk must deposit into the Chris system must do it no choice that's what we were reading earlier hold on 
yeah, let's do this. I knew that was going to happen because I hit it twice. I was trying to save it. Yeah, let's do this. The registry of the court is synonymous with the court registry investment system. An interest-bearing depository is contrary to the standard practice to maintain a court registry that is separate and distinct from Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, they have a mandatory policy. It's further ordered that these monies are deposited with the clerk of the court into the registry of this court. And then as soon as the next business day that the clerk's business allows, the clerk of the court shall deposit these funds in an interest-bearing dispute ownership fund. Ladies and gentlemen, when it says that they must put it in an interest-bearing account, the court is making a profit. The court is making a profit. Interest-bearing shows commercial activity. The courts are not allowed to make profit, ladies and gentlemen. The courts are not allowed to make a profit. They're supposed to be a non-profit corporation. Pay attention. Non-profit, but they make a profit. Non-profit, but they make a profit. So I just thought I'd explain this to you. As I said, when these courts put someone in jail for 15 months, they earn interest. Hold on. Let me show you. Interest-bearing account. So they earn interest. When they put someone in jail for 22 months, they earn interest. Wait a minute, hold on. But what if they have to dismiss all of the charges and release the person because the appeals court says you ain't had enough evidence, you ignorant mother. They still earn that interest. They still earn that money. You get nothing. They made that money off of your back. So, when you hear about people like Mr. White, you guys remember Mr. White, Mr. Anthony White, that was exonerated after 20-some years in prison? He's not the only one. I can't think of all their names because there's too many to remember everybody's name. That's the point. And they, hold on, they gave Mr. White, I think like $9 million dollars? for 20 years of his life? Look at how much interest they made off of that case for pooling it and creating securities that are surety-backed securities. Hold on. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, I was trying to come up with a word, but let's see if that phrase is actually there. I've never used the phrase before, never even thought of the phrase before until now. But I'm positively certain that they have something out there that is like this, a surety-backed security. They call it a surety bond. I don't. That's not what I'm looking for, though. I know what a surety bond is. I said a surety-backed security. See, they have asset-backed securities. And I think that's what I'm trying to say when I say surety-backed security. Because guess what? That's what an asset is. An asset stands surety. Okay. So let me let me do that because I I'm my the reason why I typed that in the way I did, because I know that phrase has gotta be someplace. Yeah, let's let's do that quote. Let's do the quote. Let's do do the quote. You know I missed that doo -wop music. Okay, so I cannot find that phrase. So that phrase... Wait a minute. Hold up. Let's see. I think I got a question. You got a question? I got a question. A serious is cancer. Who can make it the average dancer? Hyper than the heart attack. Nobody's smiling. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Sometimes I go there. Well, you need to stay there the next time you take that trip, okay? Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, we're going to look up surety back securities because that's what every inmate is in prison. 
He is a surety back security, and they did not pull up a single thing that said it. So sorry, that phrase doesn't work. But you know what I do know? Watch this. A-S-S-E-T. Like I said, it equates to asset, but I figured that they would have surety. Now, watch this. C. Oh, mama. I, mama. Uh-oh. I, mama. E, mama. Quiz. Watch this. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. It's going to have securities and Chris together. Okay. The report indicated that the bond fund investment of certain sectors, including asset backed securities, that their benchmarks did not. The, nope, not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. Uh oh. Went too far went too far yeah you know what I see what happened <sighs> that's not what I wanted it's just that by itself and I saw that earlier see this hasn't even went to the next page yet we are gonna wait alright let's see Okay, now, we got the first two. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought there was Mo. Because look at this. It went to this, and I didn't ask for this. Hold on. I didn't ask for that. I'm going to have to take care of that two-day trial thing, y'all. Hold on. Because the next one actually said Chris, and so that's what I'm looking for. Because who cares about a sector composition? See, look at all this, and when I scroll down, it was stopping me. Alright, so we're going to scroll down on this side. Relationship between the parties. Hold on, now stop. It, it ain't letting me do the research that I want to do, y'all. So, okay, that one says the court registry investment system. All right. Require that the, the gorge funds, which with prejudgment interest, total nearly $4 million, be deposited with the court registry investment system, and to be distributed pursuant to the plan of distribution to be prepared by the SEC and approved by the court. To be prepared by the SEC and approved by the court. This is the game, ladies and gentlemen. This is the game. This is how they do it. This is what they do to every single person who has been put through the court system for at least the last 30 years. They trade these cases on the market because the court claims that it's not doing the trading. Then who's doing the trading? Well, they've created these funds, mutual funds, and other funds. Wait, hold on. you telling me that the courts create these other funds in order to sell and trade? Like the District 2 Capital Fund, which is owned by the District 2, uh, no, not the District 2, not that District 2, District 2 GP LLC. Now, watch this, ladies and gentlemen, because we just told y'all about funds. F E D E R A L and. T R E A S U R E F U N D S Federal and Treasury Funds. Let's see what it gives us because we already showed you the Treasury and Federal documents where the Treasury says that they create trusts. 
Treasury manages all of the money coming into the government and paid to it. The Federal Reserve primary responsibility is to keep the economy stable by managing the supply of money in circulation. The Department of Treasury manages federal spending. That's how they do it. This is how we do it. Okay, nobody asked about the Federal Reserve. We said federal, but that's the problem. Google wants to anticipate that I'm meaning Federal Reserve since I didn't put nothing after it. So let's do F-U-N-D. I don't know. I said treasurer. It's supposed to be treasury. Okay. COVID economic relief. Get out of here. Nobody asked for you. I'm looking for federal funds. Ah, hammered is the federal funds rate. See that? And then we have the Vanguard long-term treasury fund. So we have both the treasury fund and the federal fund. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the federal government is funded through Congress and through their trading of bonds on the market. 10 year treasury constant maturity minus the federal funds rate. I'm not making this up. This is your proof as to what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, for 20 years I've been looking for this exact information that we're talking about in the last two videos. See, it ain't gone nowhere. So I'm canceling. For 20 years I've been looking for this information. I needed to have proof that the courts were trading cases certainly they are well i want to thank you guys for joining us today y'all have a good day and we'll talk later